our speaker didn't turn up today. Um, ironically, our speaker is very sick. He got very sick. In fact, he's uh, sent uh, uh, condolences to us and um, uh, including pictures of the medication that he's on. Uh, this was a sudden uh, situation that befell him. So, uh, so, but we're gonna talk about health uh, regardless. Um, as I was actually uh, jogging this morning, I, I've been trying to get up every morning and, and get into a routine. So I was just really, I felt very um, oh, great and uh, blessed that I was in, in good health. And I, I was contrasting my situation to how I felt just about two, three weeks ago when I was essentially bed re re reading, um, couldn't get out of bed. And when I was out of bed, it was very sluggish. Um, and I think I might have gotten COVID. In fact, I uh, had chills, I was sweating in my sleep and, and I lost my taste. So all the, all the symptoms, but, but just having health this morning gave me so much joy that I, I actually it inspired me um, to include a chapter in a book that I'm working on. Um, and, and just thinking about the fact that the foundation of everything we do, for those who are in pursuit of, of wealth, for those who are in pursuit of relationships, whatever it is that you're pursuing in your life, the foundation of that is your health. I mean, you have to have that in order for anything else to, to happen in your life. And so um, I would like to ask um, uh, my uh, panelists here. So I have Dr. Paul Isterling, and I also have Dr. Marachi Amugo um, on, on, on the call here. Maybe, maybe share with us the moment in which you felt the most vibrant. You felt the most alive. In those moments, you felt most vibrant and most alive. I'd like for us to zero in in those moments. What were you doing and who was around you? Because for me, that is how life ought to be. Feeling vibrant, feeling alive. Dr. Paul Isterling, do you want to reflect on that so we can dig into this topic of your health and lessons we could bring to bear? Go ahead. Um, moments where I've, I felt most vibrant and alive. I mean, there's many uh, moments throughout my life. Um, first time I went to uh, to Ghana, um, and we uh, climbed the little the mountain they have there. It was a huge mountain, but we climbed it. And uh, you know, I'm a big guy, but I you know I can still move around, and I'm not huffing and puffing and all that stuff. So. Um, moments like that, um, being with my kids, still being able to, to um, surprise my kids with how fast I can move or how swift I can be, you know, because they see me as just a big old slow daddy, <laughs> but uh, I'm still very active, uh, still work out, uh, you know, I still try to keep my, uh, my body in shape. So, um, I mean, there's many moments throughout a day, throughout a week or a year where I, you know, really feel um, energized and charged and, you know, ready to tackle whatever is in front of me. Okay, you said some things there that I've noted. I will come back to you on that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go to Dr. Amarachi Amogo. Dr. Amarachi, can you share with us moments, a moment or some moments in which you were most alive and vibrant? Okay, um, I think there are different moments to begin with, um, but let me start by sharing the moments where was when I could just free myself and just be a kid once again. So uh, my, my son is helping me with that. So, you know, just going to the park, even though I'm not very good at football, uh, but then with his dad, I could, you know, kick the ball and, you know, go climbing, what's it called? The Spider-Man web thing that they climb. So I also join him, you know, it's just that sense of being a child again, being a child, just being free, no worries in this world. Don't think about work, don't think about anything. And just be in that space. For me, it made me feel alive. And 
um, I would say spending time with um, people I care about make me feel alive. So whether it's um, an event of some sort or some sort of garden get together or the house get together or you know people who just visit, um, for me it's it's really amazing how I feel after that. So rather than feeling tired with the cooking and serving, I actually get a lot of strength from it. You know, some people say, "How do you do it?" You know, are you not tired? But for me, that's that's one moment. And um, a lot of times when I go back to my roots, Africa, and I make visits to to Nigeria, that brings me alive. I can I can't overemphasize how that makes me feel. Yeah. So that's it. Do you know? I have picked out there three common elements that runs through both moments that Dr. Paul Isling described and Dr. Amarachi Amogo dis described. They are three common elements. Dr. Paul described that he was climbing a mountain and he talked about, you know, his, he was able to keep up with his, those around him, his, his kid, uh, he wasn't hopping and puffing, um, and he was in Ghana. And you describe going to a park, Dr. Amarachi Amogo, um, and your child also helping you uh, uh, in that moment, and it, not only were you in the park, but you felt free like a child. Um, and then thirdly, you saw another, another scenario in which you travel back home. So the three elements is number one, movement. Moving. There is something about moving, even a brisk walk, that is powerful, that brings life and exuberance into, into, into us. And you know, as I get older, I, I reflect on, on, on my life and, you know, sometimes as a you know, young person, you, you go to clubs and you go out to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to hang out at nine, things like that. You know, sometimes it's fun, but, and, but it could get expensive, right? And, you know, they overcharge you over there. They, you know, some, they, a little cup that normally they will sell for like $2, they will charge $10 or $20, right? I mean, but you could have so much joy just spending time with those around you that love you, that you care for, and you alluded, alluded to this. You could create your own magic and your own happiness. And that will be much a, a million times much better than spending time at a club and you know, or, or things of, of that sort with, with strangers you don't know and it's showing off. And so, so number one element again is movement. But number two is this idea of spending time with the loved ones. There is something powerful about spending time, and it doesn't have to be family, people that care about you, friends, family members. When you spend time with those folks, they could bring out the best out of you, and you could have discussions, honest discussions with them uh, that is so empowering. You know you are not being judged. You know you are, you know you are being helped and supported. So movement. Uh, 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 family and friends, number two. And then number three, connection to your roots. That is the, the other piece. Again, Dr. Paul Isterling, who is an African-American, born in the US, talked about like some of the, his best moments being in Ghana, being connected to his roots. That's how I see it. And then Again, you, you two didn't have this discussion before we, we got here. Dr. Mugo, you also talk about, no, you live in the UK, but you talk about going back to Nigeria, and it's something about just being at home that is just, you just can't explain it. This is home, right? This is a, a great place. You feel, you feel grounded, you feel loved, you feel connected to your own person, to your identity. Dr. Amugo, go ahead. You have your hands raised. Fire on. Yeah, one of the things uh, I think is really critical here is the fact that people need to be self-aware. People really need to understand, you know, have, have a conversation with yourself and really try to tease out what exactly would make me come alive. Because people don't even think about it. We know a lot of times we're focusing on other people. We're focusing on giving, we're focusing on investing in other relationships, but we don't invest in ourselves. We don't even understand, you know, how, why do I have this emotion? 
you know, why, why, how do I feel? Am I angry? Am I disappointed? Am I sad? You know, just try to understand yourself because you cannot understand what would make you come alive if you if you're not self-aware, if you're not attuned with yourself. That's I a, just thought to mention that. That's a very key point that Dr. Mugo brought up. Because that's that's the with mental health and emotional health. That's extremely key. That's very important, especially when uh, you're in an environment that's not particularly um, spiritually healthy, right? There's a lot of a lot of uh, um, oppression in in the UK and in America that Black people have to deal with, and and sometimes that that can literally kill people. I know um, men in my life that um, were so stressed in their jobs and their lives that they had heart attacks in their 50s and strokes, you know, early on, early young men, you know, relatively young men. I'm 44 and I have to think about these things, right? And um, some of that is just from just mental health. People who I knew who were in, in decent shape, uh, ended up dying because their distress was so much. Their, their jobs and the pressure from their jobs and their family and so forth. It's just, it is very important um, for people of African descent to understand their, their, their stress threshold and uh, not just for their bodies, but for their minds and their spirits because that could be uh, a very uh, that could help tilt the scales, you know, between living another 10 years and or dying right there on the spot. It's, that's, I think that's a very key point that uh, Dr. Mugar brought up, is mental health, stress. That's important. I was over here just smiling. I'm like, wow. Um, we are in the spirit here because this morning when I went jogging, I, again, so you get ideas sometimes when you're jogging, when you're, you know, spending time. And I recorded something on my phone. What I recorded on my phone this morning as I was jogging, which is going to be part of the book I'm working on is, you have to prioritize your health, which is, again, what both of you are saying, talking about. You have to prioritize yourself and your health. And, and in that recording, I said, this is not about you being selfish. And in fact, it is a selfless act in a way to prioritize yourself because what you are, what you are doing is, or what you are demonstrating is that one, you want to contribute to others because if you take care of yourself, then you're gonna be around to contribute. Number two, you're gonna be around for a long time. You, we need to do. We need to be around here for a long time, which is what Dr. Uh, Dr. Easterling uh, alluded to. This is something I recorded this morning because it, it. I think we take our health for granted. So you know, we just you know because we have it. You know, we just do whatever we want. No, we have to really cherish this and protect it. You know, again, uh, for those of you who are tuning in, I know we we are tuning in because we have a title that says Colonial Public Health System. We're going to talk about colonial public health system. But ironically, our guest speaker got sick, very sick, very sick. And uh, in fact, again, he sent his apologies. He sent us pictures of, of uh, his medicine, his drug, he's drugged out. Um, so I thought it was ironic. So ironic that, you know, he got sick. And so we decided, let's talk about health. How can we maintain our health? Um, so instead of talking about, uh, you know, that topic, but hey, what can we do to make sure that we who are here are alive and that we can do the work that we, uh, uh, that we have determined for, uh, uh, for ourselves uh, while we are here. So welcome again to everyone. Uh, we are talking about uh, your health. So I'd like to know uh, from uh, Dr. Easterling and Dr. Mugo, what are some of the things you do, uh, concrete things that you do, some of the, some of the rituals that you do um, to stay healthy. Um, again, I think you've already alluded to it when you talk about some of the best moments in your lives, which is when you are moving, when you're spending time with um, family and friends, and when, when you are connecting to your roots. You already alluded to, to that. But 
in, what are some of the things that you do every day uh, to stay healthy, to stay alive? Um, Go yeah, ahead. I got it. Um, so one of the things I like to do uh, daily, weekly, uh, is workout, exercise. Um, for me personally, I, I'm a martial artist, so I, I keep up with my martial arts forms. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, cooking at home. Uh, so I know exactly what I'm putting into my food. Um, um, number three, uh, spend time laughing and, you know, uh, joking around with my family. Um, four, have outside activities. I'm a baseball coach as well. So I kind of 15, 14, 13 rows of that coach in baseball. And it's, it's fun watching them, you know, learn the sport, you know. There's a lot of um, uh, fun things going on there. Um, yeah, and um, and know when to rest, when, you know, it's time to shut down and, um, you know, don't, you know, spend your whole life in front of a TV, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with sitting down and watching your favorite shows and laughing or, or you know, whatever you enjoy to watch and enjoying your, your evening, your day. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking a day for yourself, calling it a mental health day and, and just doing nothing. Uh, sometimes that's necessary. So those are the things that uh, I try to keep in mind on, on my day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, a routine of, of, of staying healthy and, and living on this planet. That sounds very, very uh, lovely, Dr. About Dr. Isling. Uh, very amazing. I, I, I want to move, I'm going to move into your family and then enjoy some of some of that time with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have a good time. Uh, that's wonderful. And it feels like you, it's well balanced. Um, you're doing things at home. You're doing things outside. Yeah. Uh, you're doing things by yourself. And you're also connecting with people. Very important. Thank you so much for sharing that. Dr. Yeah. Amu. Okay. I think uh, he got the first advantage going first. So he kind of <laughs> dipped into some of the things I'll be, I'll be sharing. Um, but the first thing I want to say is the fact that you need to study your body, right? A lot of times um, we go on, on trainings on our job. We have this sort of performance appraisal and we go through an ongoing sort of learning journey on our job, just to make sure that we keep our career going, we have a currency on our CV, but we forget that the, the body that houses these idea needs to be kept healthy. And it, not everything would work for you. So what would work for you know, Dr. Easterling would be totally different from what would work for me. So it, I think the first place is, what is your body telling you? Be attuned with your body. Listen to your body. I, I am a fan of being intentional um, and not just, you know, going through life in the moves and moments and rhythms or whatever it is, but being in a space where you understand why is this happening? You know, what is my body telling me? And, and this kind of links to what Dr. Easterling was saying about rest. You know, be kind to yourself. You know, you cannot, you cannot save the world. Yeah, we're trying, but you know what, it's okay. It's okay that it's not working. You know, because I think that, you know, some of the things that really damage us is down to what we kind of allow in our mind space, really, because when we process it, then our bodies begin to, yes, yes. you know, take on that vibe, you know, it, it begins to take on whatever it is we're processing. Uh, and it's, it's really important for me to mind the people in my space. I am so protective about my space, really, because I don't want any sort of negativity. I shut it out. Really, I mean, I am that proactive. I am that proactive to shutting out negativity in my yes, space. Yes. Because once you begin to allow all of that, you don't know how damaging that will be for you. You are supposed to be responsible for your well-being, for your mental well-being. So I take that really important. I mind, you know, the things, you know, the day and age of social media, you know, what are you actually looking at? And, you know, does this mirror the energy that you want to kind of take out from, from whatever it is? You know, it's really, really important. And um, another thing that I think is really critical, which Dr. Easterly mentioned about cooking, 
so we are in a space now where everything is all fast food, fast food, fast food, and people are not taking time to sort of steam food and grill food and allow that process and enjoy that process. Uh, I remember when I was growing up uh, with my with my mom, uh, you know, one of the things that we loved doing was to work cooking, and I also looked forward to it was the fact that we took turns singing. Like in the course of cooking the dish, it could it could last like two hours or three hours. But that whole experience of being in the kitchen with my siblings, you know, throwing banter and just, you know, just being in that moment of maybe singing and using the utensils sometimes, you know, it, it is really important because that is all part of it. What I see now is that people are so um, focused on giving their time to something that doesn't quite necessarily add to their well-being. So I'm not saying that having a job is bad, it's good, but it's really important that you prioritize what is really, really, really crucial in your life. And one of the things that I, I enjoyed because when I was at university and I schooled um, in, a, in a rural part of Nigeria, but that was where my university was located, and it allowed me the opportunity to pay visits to my grandmother. And, you know, um, she wasn't too far away. And one of the things she taught me in a way going to the farm is about herbs and the importance of these herbs and why you needed setting herbs around you. You know what this herb would do in terms of a tummy ache, in terms of, you know, and that education that I had in that moment, I don't find it anywhere anymore. And people are not that intentional. They're not invested in trying to know more. I don't know if I should carry on, but I think these are a few tips of mine. Yes, please. We want you to carry on. But let me quickly just add, um, for, you talked about staying uh, attuned with your body. And again, I'm going to have to send you the video re re recording that I did this morning so you can listen to it. I may have to invite you to be a co-author on, on that book. Um, because one of the things I talk about is listening to your body, understanding your body. And the way I do it, and I do, some people do it too, is to be silent. Being silent, spending time being silent allows you to get in tune with your emotions, with, you, with your mental state. And also, it, for me, for me, I begin to, um, begin to want only good things. I mean, it, 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 what happens is it helps me get clarity as far as like what I need and what I don't want. So what's been happening for me is I want certain kinds of kinds of foods and I I reject certain kinds of you know foods and drinks. And also I begin to get clarity about people that I want in my life and people I don't want in my around, around me. All because I spend time alone. That's a, that's a, a moment of silence helps me stay attuned with my body and attuned with myself. It helps me understand what I need and what I don't need. So just wanted to add that. That is really powerful uh, thing that you said about staying attuned. And is not for me. Again, it it, it really helps in, in various aspects of, of your life. And when you and when, what happens is when you are attuned with yourself, you begin to see danger coming because you know yourself. A lot of people don't know themselves. A lot of people just get up and they go. They don't try to ask themselves, how, 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 how are we doing? How am I doing today? They just get up and go. Um, but what happens is when, you are, when, when you're in tune with yourself, um, you begin to actually really know, okay, I want that and I don't want that. That is good for me. No, that is not good for me. And, and, and I think that is a really powerful uh, place to be. You also talked about, uh, you know, just having folks, you know, um, um, who are negative away from you. And again, that is something I have been seriously working on in my life. So Dr. Mugo, I wanted you to carry on because you are really dropping some gems this morning. Um, do you have more stuff on your list that you'd like to share? Maybe just at the back of what you've just um, talked about now. Um, and that's in terms of you understanding yourself because um, how you treat yourself would determine how others would treat you. And what I've realized, and I'm speaking for myself because it's been a journey for me, to be honest, is that where are your boundaries? Like, have you actually sat down to ask yourself, 
what are my boundaries? What are my boundaries in relationship uh, with you know, family, with co-workers, with whoever, what are my boundaries? What is, what is unacceptable? You know, where do you draw the line? Really important because for your mental well-being, you can be a dump. You can be a place where everyone would just come and dump things, you know, at you. And sometimes it, it is really important to, to let people understand how to treat you. But you cannot let people understand that if you haven't come to understand how you should treat yourself because it's really important and i see a lot of people say oh i was abused you know emotionally and you know verbally in my relationship oh uh, but you know you you have allowed it and that is you've given somebody the permission to do the same to you so it's all about establishing those boundaries and in terms of health you know food um there are so many ways to make Healthy foods taste really delicious. It, trust me, <laughs> I explore a lot on different vegetables and how to cook them and, and you know, without killing the nutrients in them. Because sometimes people say, you know, healthy eating is boring. It's not, you know, it's not the beef and, you know, all of those kind of things. But you can actually have a very healthy, a clean diet and it, is re it tastes really nice. But you need to be invested in wanting to know more about that. Uh, we also talk about allergies. You know, some people don't even realize they have certain allergies. For example, lactose intolerance. I had I had um, a friend of mine who didn't even know she was lactose intolerant, um, and she's been carrying on for years. And she's saying, "Oh, I always feel funny after breakfast." And I have, um, you know, I I did ask a question. You know, what kind of what kind of milk do you have? And she says, "Oh, I have like cow um, semi skimmed milk." And I did say to her, maybe you're reacting to the lactose um, in it. Have you tried plant-based milk, almond, oat milk, rice milk? Have you tried any of those? Oh, it's so bland. It doesn't taste good. And, and I said to her, look, there, is, there are ways to make this taste good. You know, it's about, for example, if you have a bowl of cereal, um, you could have a bowl of different combinations in it. You could have the berries, which is a fruit. And you could have the cranberry, which is another fruit. And then you bring in the bran flakes and the other things and the granola and the raisins. And it's an amazing, you know, and you could you imagine that she allowed herself all these years and not even willing to give up taking milk just because she felt it's going to be it's going to be bland trying plant based um, product. So for me, it's, it's all down to being intentional, being aware understanding your body what does your body like what does your what is your body you know listening to your body because sometimes before you have a back ache two weeks ago or three weeks before then you already started having the sign but you are not paying attention you're just buzzing you're not paying attention to your body you know you have a headache oh it's it's stress you're not listening to your body really important that we're paying attention to our body because it's the biggest asset that we have you know we need to protect this container, make it beautiful. Dr. Paul. Yeah, I agree with uh, everything Dr. Mugo is saying. It's just, you have to pay attention to your body and you have to be intentional with your health. It has to be something that you think about and you carry out. Uh, developing a routine is important. So you just get into the habit of doing certain things at certain times. Uh, and your body likes routine. Your body likes to, you know, to have something that it does every day. It doesn't like to to shift and do a whole lot of different stuff. Uh, that's why when you're traveling across um, countries, it can impact your health because your your routine is is disrupted. Uh, so paying attention to your routine is is very important and uh, keeping in mind or, or or paying attention to exactly what you're putting into your body and what's coming out of it. That's wonderful. So we've talked about some of those great moments. Um, let's see, uh, in closing, can we briefly talk about some of the worst moments that we have experienced? And there's a reason why I'm bringing the, uh, this up because, um, you know, when you feel exuberance, and alive, you literally increase your lifespan. You're literally doing that. 
um, because you have certain hormones releasing your body and your, your body says, you know, thrive, thrive. This is the place to be. Um, and when you are stressed um, and you go into a chronic stress, because a little bit of stress is good, okay? But when you go into chronic stress due to one thing or, or the other, you literally shorten your lifespan, you know? Um, you, you, so, so I want us to talk a little bit about examples or, or moment, moments in which we felt down. Um, we felt stressed, we felt beaten down. And in those moments, what was happening to us? Who was around us? What were, you, what, what were we saying? What were we doing? Dr. Amugo, let's start with, with you. Okay. Well, there's been different moments um, that I personally have felt. Um, I wasn't at my best moment. And one of the things that really sticks out to me because I am someone who is very big on relationship. I'm very big on family, you know, keeping that sort of, and a lot of times when I go into an argument or kind of misunderstanding and it's extended or I'm being misunderstood, it really, really weighs me down, really. And it, it is even worsened if you're trying to broke a piece <laughs> and then the other party is like nudging you aside. That is a difficult place to be for me. So I would say that that was one of my lowest moments. I hate being in that space. Um, another thing is being faced with a challenge and not knowing how to get out of it. I feel stuck. Um, and these days, one of the things I would tell you, which is really difficult because of the time and space, and this sort of linked into the argument, or sorry, the conversation you had, uh, was it last week or so, around um, the workplace and you know the whole people leaving the workplace and the whole you know, churn. And it's, it's predominantly work. So I have found, I've been in higher education for nearly a decade now, and, to be honest, I've never felt the amount of heavy lifting that I have to do this year. It is, and, and nobody's even asking, how are you doing? It's just that. And for me, it's, it's something that really weighs down on me because you have to think about what are you sacrificing to keep this going? You know, and the fact that sometimes I find myself at work odd hours, sometimes eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you're trying to finish stuff at work. And one of the things that made me really reconsider that was the fact that I came back one day and I was having this sort of random conversation with my son, just helping him with a bath. And then he said, um, daddy's always at home, but mommy, you're always at work. I was like, oh my goodness. And I said, no, but I'm always here. Daddy works, um, but he is always at home but you are never at home. And now that he seems to be cooking, although it's food that I have cooked already and he's just heating it up for him. So for me, that was like, is that's an image that I want him to have about me as a woman or as a mom. And it, it's, I had to make a commitment to him that day that I would have a start time and a finish time and maybe probably days that I will pick him up from school because before now I was doing the school run more but since all of this work, it's been intense. So it's now my husband doing it. So um, it's all of that guilt. So it really weighs down on, on me and how I you know, perceive myself as a woman, as a successful woman in, in my, you know, on my career, my journey. So yes, so I, I don't know if I answered the question, but these are for me, some of those. Absolutely. Just interesting that when you began the discussion even your mood changed um your voice your tone your countenance dropped uh when you started talking about uh, some of those uh difficult uh, and challenging moments and it's a testament to what those moments can do to us and so and the, the reason why we're having this discussion is not just to have it but to also think about ways to create solutions around those moments because again a little bit of stress is good but it becomes bad when, it bec when it's chronic. When you allow it to fester over time, it begins to damage your uh, uh, body, even at the cellular level. 
So that is why we're having this conversation. So how can we make sure we, we know we we're stressed, that we're able to you know, solve uh, around it and make sure that um, we remain healthy. Uh, so like, uh, do you want to share? Um, do you have any instances? I mean, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah. Um, uh, just what the Dr. Uh, Abug was saying is, is the stress um, from the outside world and bringing it to your home. I think that's critically important. Um, not only can that uh, affect you um, and your personal health, uh, your personal journey, uh, but that can also affect, you know, your children and your your spouse and how they see themselves. And it can affect how they, um, how they deal with stress when they get older. So setting a good example of how uh, you function in life and how you deal with stress. I mean, we all have different stressors, but how do we deal with it? Are you an angry person or are you one that shuts down? These things can not only, again, can not only affect us, but also affect the people around us. And we need to be uh, cognizant of that. Um, and not only uh, just, just that, but also if we're trying to stay in the game, we're trying to stay in this life, we have to be very uh, uh, cognizant and aware of how we, we deal with our stress. Um, how we al allow that to affect us, our sleeping patterns, our our eating patterns, and uh, you know the way the world is trying to uh, uh, shape and maneuver itself. It is really up to us to ensure that we uh, make sure that we don't allow the world to completely shape our families and shape our our private lives because those that's our that's our time and we are entitled to our time we're entitled to our rest we're entitled to uh, a netflix and chill day and without having to feel guilty about uh not doing a work you know all the time and uh some people really you know take that stress upon themselves and and it's 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 not it's not worth it like i said i have i have mentors of mine who um should be alive right now but aren't because the stress was too much and and they allowed themselves to uh, they allowed the world to kind of get the better of them, and it's really sad when you see it happen, um, especially you know for uh, uh, black people across the world because it's most already stressful enough, uh, just you know living uh, and being. So uh, take that time, you know, know when to, to push the desk away, know when to shut the computer down, uh, you know. Just know when to turn the TV off and go outside or or know when to just, you know, turn the TV on and do nothing, right? These things are important. It's, it's, it's really important. Uh, and it's, it's no, there's nothing out here that's worth our lives, right? It's just take care of ourselves, you know. Okay, so um, let me bring in a different uh, topic here, just to kind of like do a little pushback, right? Because there's too much agreements happening here. Okay, but some of us are ambitious and we have recognized that work needs to be done, right? And yes, we cannot save the world, but you know, but we also derive a lot of um, a joy um, and purpose from, from the kind of work that we do. Let's think about somebody like MLK. Martin Luther King, I'm pretty sure he was stressed all the time. I mean, he was looking out for his life all the time. He was, he was, he was, and people were trying to murder him and, you know, um, but he kept going, right? He didn't say, okay, I, I, I'm gonna, you know, put myself first and, 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 you know, but he felt like there's a bigger purpose to the point that he gave his life, right? So the question to you now is, you know, at what, at, you know, at what point do we switch and say, you know what? Okay, I'm actually gonna give my life, right? To what I'm doing because it is that much important to do, you know, for me to, to, to give it my all, to burn the candle on both ends, right? So that others can live, you know? And, and, and in our community, I mean, we, we, we are having these discussions um, around that, you know, we, you go out and you see in the slum areas and, you know, you know, okay, some of these folks, can help themselves because they are in a in a in a in a vicious cycle. But you can see it. You know, you know, th there is a way to get out. Maybe you could go and do and help out. You know, by doing something. Uh, again, not that you are going to save them, but 
I'm using the example of MLK, right? That was what he did. So, so how do you balance this idea of giving it your all, even if it means your life, and staying healthy? Uh, so that I'd have to ask, I wonder what MLK would say knowing that his legacy, knowing his legacy and how it's been manipulated. I wonder right now if he would say it was worth it. I wonder if he was alive right now or we was able to communicate with him right now, would he say that it was worth giving up my life for what we have today? I wonder. I, I think that's a very difficult question to face because uh, not only have uh, has his legacy been kind of manipulated uh, and, and used against uh, Black people in, in different ways, but um, sometimes it seems like people have kind of used it just as a way of, of giving lip service to, to serious problems, right? So I wonder if MLK himself would say, yeah, my life was worth it. My life was worth exactly what we have today. I wonder. And I wonder if his kids would also make that same argument. I don't know. I don't know. And I can't speak for those who do want to give their life to a cause. Um, for, for that, I'd say you, everybody still has to find balance. Every, we all still have to find balance. All right. We still have, even if we do give our lives for that cause, we still have people that we care about who care about us. We still have uh, parents and children. And we have to stop and ask ourselves, as well as ask them, is it worth it? Is it, at the end of the day, is it worth it? And, uh, and everybody has to ask that question for themselves. Dr. Mugu, you want to chime in before we close on that topic? Yes, yes, I, I want to say something because um, maybe not the particular case in point, because I think Dr. Easterlin has done justice to that because we, we never know. But a lot of times when I speak to people who are on in that zone of, I have to do this, um, the job has to be done. Um, one of the things that I ask them, why are you doing this? And it's always about, you know, my children. It's always about, you know, the future, the legacy. And I said, this is a lot of burden to put on your children. Like, don't blame them for what you're doing now. Right. Exactly. Because that exactly. is your priority, not their priority. Exactly. Because you haven't even asked them, what right. is your priority and where do you see my role in your life? Because exactly. a lot of times it's so convenient for us to say, oh, I'm doing this because of my wife. I'm doing this because of my significant other or because of my children or because of my mom, my brothers and my sisters. But... The question is, you know, why are you doing it? There's something, there's a, there's a quote, there's a phrase my husband will always say, don't let your vision strangle you, right? So That's don't, let, good it, one. That's yeah, don't good let your one. vision strangle you. It's, we, we are still facing, you know, some sort of, you know, problems right now with being black, being different, right? That, you know, our predecessors, our ancestors tried to, to solve. But we, it is presented itself in a different way now, but we are still plowing on, right? So it is very important that we stay alive as much as we can to make sure that we fight the course as far as we want to. And also um, being able and being available to leave the le next legacy in our children. Um, um, Easterling talked about people dying early and it's just so sad to see young children growing up with our fathers, with our mothers, you know, Maybe if their parents stayed alive, their life would have taken a different trajectory. And it's right. really important that we right. are not being selfish in the sense that I have to do this work because whatever money or whatever it is depends on it. There is more to life than what we are chasing after. And sometimes we think that is a priority. Now, um, there was another thing I wanted to say, but I think um, Dr. Easterling was saying quite a lot, but I, I would, it will come back. Yeah. But I think it's, it's really important that we, we put our priorities right and not have to put the burden on our children or whoever for overworking ourselves. Yes, I remember another thing. So for, for people who love to work, um, there's something that I always say to them. Um, you mustn't do everything yourself, right? You need to delegate. Some people just have this sense yes. of, 
it has to be me named on whatever it is that you're doing and they don't want to work together collaboratively with other people and get people to to ease the burden in certain quarters and you know share it amongst yourself but everyone wants to be or some people want to be that person that is you know doing all the job and day and age of technology which a lot of our forefathers didn't have um you can delegate to technology you you mustn't be on site every single time to do everything i mean these are just some tips for people who are sort of in that zone on how they can manage this i i don't know if that was helpful yeah there are extreme limitations to martyrdom uh giving your life for a cause uh, i mean it's all well and good and i'm not uh, you know i have heroes that are not here because and and they're they're heroes precisely because they're not here they gave their lives right but um i mean martyrdom does have its limitations like again what would malcolm x's kids say would they rather have him here what would martin luther king's kids say you know there's a lot of people out there that gave their life for a cause but we don't know exactly how their family felt about it you know i don't know credit scott king would rather have her husband with her or have a statue <laughs> you know down in washington dc that's a hard call right so you have to know your limitations and everybody's different. Um, there's also no denying though that um, the work that they've done uh, ha have made life better for most of us today, right? Um, but it's, you know, the, the, the ideas uh, of Marcos Gave, um, whether it's the, um, the movement, the civil rights movements that uh, Martin Luther King um, helped to invigorate and, and lead. Um, it, you know, I mean, it, it led to a lot of laws being passed and, you know, it made, it, it made life better for us today, right? So um, they gave their lives. Um, and I agree with you, you know, you know we, we would never know how they will respond to that question that you ask. Was it worth it, right? But we do know, though, at least it's made our lives today a little better. And what I would then say about that is, let's not take that for granted. Okay, some people have laid their lives for us to be here. I agree. Sweat and blood. We better not take it for granted. So it means we should be alive, no. right? Yes, there's, there's still struggle, um, and there's still a fight that, that we need to fight, but. We don't have to give our lives like, like, like they did because they've done it for us already. And I believe that in this day and age, there are smart ways, and Dr. Mugo alluded to the idea of working together, smart ways to get a lot done without dying, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, and, we can, and we can do that. Right. We can definitely do that. So we, we, you know, I, I love the idea that we are the dream of our ancestors. We really are. And so we should take that seriously, pay the price for us to be here. And we have it much better than they did. We have it much better. I mean, 100, 100, 100 years ago, I would be, uh, be thinking about immigrating to the US. I mean, I probably, I might be lynched in you know, somewhere, right? But today I, I can move about freely. So we have it better. Let's not deny that. So let's use the freedom that our ancestors have paid for us Let's use that to make our lives better, live longer and happier lives, and make our children's lives better, and develop our communities and, and help others move forward. Are there any last thoughts on this before we, we close out? Dr. Amogo, any, any final words? Uh, well, I, I don't, but it's, it's maybe something that could help anyone out there is about you know, being intentional. Just be intentional, be present in life, generally speaking, just be present and um, be kind to yourself. Be kind. Thank you. Dr. Isling? Yeah, I agree. Uh, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and know your limitations. And uh, if you are going to give your life, make sure it's worth it. Dr. Yusuf uh, wrote um, on here, uh, thank you, Dr. Yusuf, for posting. You know, he's, he says, personally, what I do every night as a ritual is that I try to go to sleep without keeping nobody in my mind. By so doing, I strongly believe that there is an invisible link between my spiritual and mental state of, of mind and 
uh, to my physical state um, of balance, so to speak. Uh, it makes me re rejuvenate and maintain my health status every day. Thanks for sharing that, Dr. Yusuf. And I want to thank all the audience who uh, tuned in to listen. I hope you gleaned a few things from our discussion. Go out there, be healthy, live a long life.